Hi, my name is Ben Aronovich. I'm the author of Rivers of London, which has been selected to be City Read London for 2015. City Reads London 2015 is a city-wide event covering all 33 boroughs in which we will have a cornucopia of events for you to do, starting with my book, but uh, you don't have to read my book. We're perfectly happy for you to read any book. The main important thing is that you read a book. And if you normally read a book, read another book as well, because I, I think it's, we often neglect people who do read when we do these kind of things to encourage people to read. And I think people who read a small amount should read more. So City Reads London. Rivers of London is about a young police constable called Peter Grant, who while guarding a crime scene one night in the middle of the night, is approached by a man who says he saw the whole thing. There's only one small problem. This potential witness turns out to be a ghost. But Peter, being a resourceful young man and fairly desperate not to spend his time doing paperwork, tries to take a witness statement from him. And this launches him into a career in the most secret, well, not exactly secret, more kind of like hidden under the carpet, branch of the Metropolitan Police that deals with supernatural crime. And so, the rest of the book is basically about his adventures, finding out about magic in London, but also solving some horrible crimes as well. Uh, I, this is because I like crime, and I like science fiction and fantasy, and I just didn't want to write two books, so I wrote one that did both. And some people like it, and, and that's good. <laughs> when I was young, I can't remember whether I was nine or ten, but it was around that kind of age, I was still in primary school, there was an annex to the local library, which was the Camden Library, Chester Road Camden Library. And it was a special annex for the school, so, and, and children in general. And uh, they led us in there and they showed us these shelves of books. And up until then, I'd only ever really read books that the school had given me, including these, these strange books, which all I remember about them, they were called the Griffins, and you had a gold Griffin book and you had a red Griffin book, and you were supposed to progress slowly. And I can't remember a single thing about any of these books. I can't remember a single plot about this book. And so anyway, into this book. And in those days, um, well, this is quite a long time ago, it's like 1973, 1974, uh, children's libraries were full of these enormous hardbacks, full of these enormous hardbacks with names like Island Adventure and things like that, and Enid Blyton's and stuff like that. And I was walking along and I found a book by a famous uh, science fiction writer called Andre Norton, who despite the name is actually a woman, and it was called the it was called Star Rangers or Galactic Rangers. I can't remember one of those two. I think it was Star Rangers. And I picked it up and I read it, and that was essentially me done for. Uh, it was a lifetime of geekness and reading. And but the thing that I remember was it opened up an entire world. It just it didn't just open up this 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 fantastic science fiction world, but it opened up. Uh, things about Roman history, uh, meditations on the nature of, of, of life, of humanity, and on, on how our relationships with each other. Of course, I didn't know that, being nine at the time. I was just going, oh, look at the cool robot. But um, the thing about reading is it takes, it takes you places, and it takes you to real places. And I know that sounds really strange, coming from a fiction writer who writes fantasy novels about magicians and ghosts and, and fantastic creatures, but it takes you to real places, even if sometimes those real places uh, look strange if, or, or imaginary. Sometimes the imaginary places shine a light on the real places in a way that you cannot, they, they cut through the murk. They cut through the murk of everyday life and you can see the real place in the light of the imaginary place. And they teach us about relationships and there really is no better way of delivering information directly into your brain. It is the direct, sort of like sticking a wire in your brain and plugging in information because you are unmediated. It is you and the, and the writer and their direct kind of like brain to brain communication, which you do not get in television and you do not get in plays because there is always something mediating it through, including how hungry you are in the middle of a production, which is always a problem for me, as you can probably tell. And Reading is good for you, and it doesn't matter whether you read it off your phone or off your Kindle or off your e-reading device of your choice, or whether you, like me, end up using all three at some point, including hardback books, because I like to have a 
hardback copy because I like to scribble in them because I'm weird that way. Or or you read it because of, or like I did, half the books I read, I read off on beaches. I read on beaches and we would rip them in half so that somebody else could start your kind of bodice ripper while you were finishing it. And, and, and it doesn't matter if it's a bodice ripper or what some people would regard as worthless literature. Who the hell do they know? The important thing is that it is taking you to places and it is teaching you things and you are learning things from it. But also it is giving you a vocabulary to ask the right questions. And the right questions are the questions that you want answered, in case you were wondering. And so reading is important. Reading is important and it is noticeable that whenever anyone tries to restrict your freedom, one of the first things they will do is try to restrict your access to literature, to books, to reading. They will try and restrict your access to that because they know that if they can stop you from reading, if they can stop the, the, if they can control what you read, then they can control what you think. And, and I don't think you even need to read 1984 to understand how that works. So reading, it's very important. It's also tremendous fun, which is something we shouldn't forget. So don't be worthy, just enjoy yourself. Read a book, get inside somebody else's brain for a while. It's exciting. <laughs>